the SGR line here in Tanzania has a much more international or multinational flavor with right behind me there's the Yapi Merkezi office. So Yapi Merkezi is a, a Turkish company that's the primary contractor for the first two phases of the SGR line. As alluded to, albeit a bit ambiguously in the introduction, Tanzania is taking a significantly different approach than its neighbor Kenya in constructing its SGR. So already Kenya has an operational SGR line between its capital Nairobi and its port city of Mombasa, which I've actually ridden in both directions. The Kenyan SGR line, as built thus far, was funded almost entirely by the Chinese State Export and Import Bank, and a Chinese state construction company was the contractor for the project. In Tanzania, however, the project is being built and funded not by one dominant player. So the contractor, as I've already explained, for the first line or the first phase of Tanzania's SGR line is Yapi Merkezi, a Turkish company that's building the SGR line from Dar es Salaam to Morogoro in the first phase and then to Makutapora in the second phase with that second leg of the line going through the capital Dodoma. Recently, a Chinese state construction company won the bid or won the contract for the fifth leg of the Tanzanian SGR line, which will be from Isaka, where Tanzania has a dry port, to Mwanza, the Lake Victoria port city. Tanzania has yet to award contracts for the third and fourth legs of the project, and funding is also still a bit up in the air, albeit Tanzania has already secured a loan from the British Bank Standard Charter to fund uh, much of the second leg of the project, the Morogoro Makutapora leg. And that Standard Charter loan is funded in large part by the Swedish and Danish export import banks. The rest of the project, or I should say what has been constructed of the project thus far, other than this second leg, has been funded entirely by the Tanzanian government. And recently I actually spoke with a high-level manager involved in the project who was telling me that the Tanzanian government's approach to constructing its standard gauge railway is that it wants to provide, it wants to use internal funding to start the project and to show that the project is viable, that it's economically viable and that it can actually and will actually be built. And then to court funding from a variety of sources and to make different banks and countries compete in order to uh, be able to lend Tanzania the money it's going to need in order to complete the rest of the project. And likewise, Tanzania is taking a, a similar approach with its selection of contractors. So uh, Yapi Merkezi is actually teaming up with a, a, a Portuguese company in a joint venture to construct the first leg. Yapi Merkezi is going at it solo in the second leg. As I've already mentioned, the uh, Chinese state construction company has got the Saka Mwanza leg. And uh, the, the Tanzanian government is having all these different contractors, like banks and countries, compete in order to win the contracts to build the different phases of the project. And what's behind this approach, and this is a, according to the this uh, Tanzanian official I, I spoke with, 
it's that the Tanzanian government does not want to have terms and conditions of the project dictated to it. The Tanzanian government wants essentially to be operating or building its SGR on its own terms, on terms that work and are fitting for Tanzania, which comes in stark contrast to the, the Kenyan SGR and what you might refer to as something like the Chinese model for doing business in Africa and elsewhere in the world. So China uh, not only offered the uh, offered financing for the Kenyan SGR project, but it provided the vast majority of the financing for it. And in turn, China expects, as occurred, that its own construction firm or firms will get the contract to build it. And China's also been involved in the operations of the railway. As as I was riding the railway, I, I did see chi Chinese workers on the on the train and at the stations. So whereas with Kenya and to some extent, likewise, Ethiopia to the north of Kenya. Uh, so whereas Kenya has gone, gone at it in a way that, uh, has enabled it to construct and, and launch its, its SGR line well in advance of Tanzania, as, as was the case with Ethiopia. In the process, Kenya has racked up several billion dollars worth of debt to China. And Kenya, as a country, not only is more indebted to China than Tanzania, but Kenya is just has a lot more debt in general than Tanzania. So Tanzania's got this approach where it feels, it, I mean, it, the official I spoke with wasn't naming names, like he wasn't specifically saying, look what's happened with Kenya, Kenya is indebted to China, China is dictating terms to Kenya, but the this Tanzanian official who's a manager involved in the project was was making it clear that things, the this SGR is only going to be constructed in a way that's fitting and truly works for Tanzania. And when I posed the question to him, well, so how is it that Tanzania can come up with enough internal funding for the project so that it doesn't have to take on major debt the way uh, Kenya did? The This Tanzanian official was pointing primarily to what he and others describe as very strong fiscal management by the late Tanzanian president John Magafuli, basically stating that Magafuli was able to make uh, very good use of funds to to slash pork, to to cut down on corruption and money going to non-vital needs in order to save money and build up Tanzania's coffers so that it can construct major infrastructure projects like the the SGR line. Now, in Ethiopia, to the north of Kenya, there's somewhat of a hybrid model in the sense that there's, like Kenya, there's an SGR line linking the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa, to the Indian Ocean coast. This is the Ethiopia Djibouti SGR line that runs from Addis Ababa to the Indian Ocean coast in Djibouti. As is the case with the Kenyan SGR, this SGR line was funded uh, in large part by way of a, a Chinese state loan and was constructed by a Chinese state contractor. However, there is another SGR line that is uh, partially constructed that connects in Ethiopia that connects to the Ethiopia Djibouti SGR line. This is a north-south line in Ethiopia. That line, with that project, 
Yapi Merkezi, again, is the contractor. And similarly to what's going on with the Tanzania SGR project, there's European, there's a variety of European funding for uh, that connecting SGR line in Ethiopia. So again, Tanzania is going out this significantly differently than its neighbor Kenya. It's going out it significantly differently than Ethiopia did with its primary SGR line, although in a similar fashion to as is being done with this connector line in Ethiopia. And time will tell whether this proves to be a winning strategy, whether whether it works at all. It does appear that that the the Tanzanian SGR line, the first, not even the entire first leg, but part of the first leg, it does appear that it will launch later this year, but it's taking much longer for this project to come to fruition than the Kenyan and Ethiopian counterparts. Granted, none of these projects are built to completion. There's an East Africa railway master plan. I'm not sure if the Ethiopian one counts as that. It's it's a Horn of Africa project. But there's there's this plan to connect SGR lines country to country throughout the region with obviously the, the Tanzanian and Kenyan lines being core elements of this master plan. So a lot still stands to be seen. Uh, will this Tanzanian model uh, indeed indeed work? This source who I spoke with was saying that there, the the way he put it is that there there are countries and banks knocking on the door, that there there are multiple countries and banks, quite a few in the case of banks, I, I believe several in in the case of countries knocking on the door wanting to provide financing for different phases of the Tanzanian SGR line and you could imagine why various countries would be interested in it maybe in the case of Turkey which there there is no financing agreement between Tanzania and Turkey although there something along those lines was discussed in the past uh, but you could you'd see why Turkey, in the case that it's got a contract, a major contractor operating the region, you could see why Turkey might be interested in providing financing. Other countries, China, for instance, not only has a has a contractor or contractors operating in the region and operating on the Tanzania SDR project, but Tanzania is very interested in the mineral wealth in Africa, and all <laughs> Tanzania is interested in financing and doing business in Africa. Period. And the the SGR line in Tanzania will will facilitate the transport of minerals and it'll facilitate a whole lot of business in the region in general once completed. So there's a lot to look out for in the future. Uh, is the debt in Kenya unsustainable? We shall see. There, there's a there's a lot of debate right now in Kenya. There's frustration over the debt level not just with regard to the SGR project, but with regard to the overall debt level in Kenya. And there's debate as to whether the SGR line that exists there is even worth it. So a lot to follow in the years to come, both on the Tanzanian SGR project and the development of SGRs and railway infrastructures in the region as a whole. I, I will be following this in months and years to come, and I, I hope to be doing more reporting on it to keep coming back to you. And Asante Sana for listening and watching and for your interest. And I look forward to seeing you sometime soon, possibly with me riding the Tanzanian SGR.